I learned the hard way that you will go to court if you do this for very long at a time. It's not a question of when you're going to be sued. It's not a question of when you're going to have to give a deposition. It's a question of, I mean, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Uh, we were talking this morning and so, some of the people that have already been to, been to court or been through the deposition process. While we're talking this morning, I want you to understand I'm not going to teach you about FMCSA regulations. I'm not going to teach you about the law. I'm going to teach you about precedence. A precedent is a law that was never passed. A law is something that is passed by a legislature, signed by an executive, you know, like the city council passes a law and the mayor signs it, or the Congress passes a law and the president signs it. And we're not talking about that today. We're talking about a precedence which carries almost as much weight and that what we have to deal with if we go to court. A precedent means that a judge made a decision about something that the decision had not been made before. That is appealed to a higher court, the higher court upholds it, now you're stuck with it. Whether it's right, wrong, or whatever, you're stuck with it. I'm going to give you some examples today of the things that we're talking about. The examples I give you actually happen the way I'm telling you that they happen. Those of you who have been safety managers or risk managers for a while will identify with the things we're going to talk about today. We're going today. to talk about punitive damages. None of us want to cheat somebody out of a damage that our driver caused. If our driver hits somebody, it's his fault, and that person is hurt, we don't want, mind pay, well, we mind, but we're going to pay the medical bills, we're going to pay lost wages, we're going to pay for his car to get fixed, that type of thing. That's not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is if the company or the driver did something wrong, then they're going to ask for punitive damages. Punitive meaning punishing or trying to make an example out of you. $64 million, $32 million, $27 million, a million dollars and a half. Can anybody tell me what I'm talking about? Decisions of court cases that went to court that they should have settled out of court. In every one of those things, they had a chance to settle for half or less of what they finally got dinged for. You don't want to go to court unless you have all your ducks. did not want the load to be late. The dispatcher did not want the load to be late. They insisted that he went. He had had five hours of sleep and 24 hours prior to him leaving on this trip. How do we know he had five hours of sleep or less on the, before leaving this trip? Because they subpoenaed his cell phone records, and his cell phone records tell the story. They tell all the top calls he received and all the calls that he made in the 24-hour period before he went out. If, they ever, if you're ever in a bad accident, when your driver's in a bad accident and you're going to court or depositions, they will ask you for everything except dental records be prepared to, pre to provide it. The driver of the truck was functionally asleep and did not see the stopped cars. The driver of the truck hit the stopped cars at 65 miles an hour. The driver of the, this car that's on the slide and the driver and nine other people died in that accident. The company was found at fault. The punitive damage award was $64 million. That's right, $64 million in part, and the big part was they could not prove in court that they had adequately trained their driver in circadian sleep cycles. How many of you know what a circadian sleep cycle is? Well, the rest of you aren't teaching it, then I can guarantee you. $64 million worth of One circadian One of the things that I had to do when I was working for the last company that I worked for, which was a very large company, and I worked for a division of them, the transportation division, was I had to provide curriculum for training for all the other safety managers that were in the company. The curriculum I provided was translated into French because we had, had drivers in uh, Quebec, Canada. <coughs> and I had to do one training session for every week. Now, those of you who have been in fairly large companies understand, coming up with a training session for all your drivers every week is a very difficult proposition. Again, that's where these people come in. You can make sure that all of your drivers take the, take the training, that all your drivers are done. But you've got to be able to do it. Remember, you're going to get tired of hearing me say it, if it's not in writing, if it's not signed, if it's not dated, or if you cannot find it, or any combination of those, it simply did not happen when you go to court or deposition. Next slide. When I was the risk manager, a man came to see me that I had never met before. I never heard of Infinity. I'd never heard of Vertical Alliance Group or any of that kind of stuff. And a very quiet, mild manner came to see me and asked my secretary if you know, I could spare him a few minutes. And he explained this program to me. 
Now it started in 1999. I didn't even hear about it until 2008, I think it was. Nice guy, won't tell you his name, name no name, better no blame. But he's a nice guy. When he finally got done explaining the whole program, and we started and stopped several times, I looked at him and I said, you don't even understand what you have, do you? What you have is something every safety manager either has been dying for or should have been dying for because it eliminates a burden off of him that he can't hardly eliminate himself. Remember, my wife was coming in on weekends to help me with the filing and the paperwork to keep track of all this stuff. Because everything I've been talking about, you have to have if you go to court in a, in a bad case. I'm serious, you do. So I tried to get him excited as I was. I was, I was thrilled to death. And he's, well, that's good. I'm so glad, you know. I could never get him excited about it. I hope I'm getting you excited about it because you understand it better, you know? Any other questions that you have on this?